Hello everyone and welcome to the class. My name is Audrey and today's reading class is going to be about uh, marriage. Okay, marriage and how it affects your lifespan. Should be an interesting article. The article is an opinion article about this topic. So uh, how marriage affects your lifespan. And maybe um, you can have an opinion one way or the other but this article is going to take a look at some studies done in this topic and we can see the actual numbers uh, done in this in this study so maybe we can pick uh, what we're going to uh, decide and what our opinion will be about this topic so we have a student welcome Ramulo <laughs> help me with your name Humble. can you tell me Homulo. Homulo. Okay, very good, very good. Are you from Brazil? Yeah, I'm from Brazil. Okay, nice to see you, nice to see you. And uh, what part of Brazil do you live in? I'm living in the northwest. Okay, very good, very good. It's nice to meet you. So, um, again, to for those of you who are just coming in, um, our topic today is about marriage and how marriage may affect your lifespan. I found this study to be quite interesting, so I hope that you all can find it interesting as well. As soon as we um, open up for everybody to join, those of you who are waiting can join the class and um, we'll take a look at that article, okay? So as we're going okay. through the article, we're going to um, separate the article into sections and um, each section you'll be able to read uh, after which I can maybe correct any pronunciation errors that you had and you'll be able to ask questions of me and also of your classmates. So I hope that your classmates are willing to help you out. It's always great when we have helpful classmates who can practice their English as well as give you the correct answers. Okay, so um, it looks like we're open. Go ahead and join if you have been waiting and we will get started. Okay, so it's nice to see everyone. Welcome to the class. Um, as I said, the topic is about marriage and how it affects your span. Okay, so we are going to start with our introductions. Tell us your name, where you're from, and do you think that being married can help you live longer or maybe make you live shorter? What do you think? Okay, so we'll start first with Antonio. How are you? Are you with us? We can't hear you. You might need to unmute your microphone. So click the icon right above the verbling chat. The microphone icon you might icon you might need to click that. Yes. Now can you hear okay, me? Very good. Now we can hear you. Okay, so Antonio, where okay. are you from? Uh, I'm from Spain. Okay. But now I'm I'm Okay, very I'm good, very good. In, and what do you think Argentina. about this? Oh you're living in Argentina. Interesting. What brings you to Argentina? Wow. Uh, exactly the the subject oh. that you are talking. Oh, oh I, yeah. I met a girl here, and I married. Okay, very good, very good. Um, so tell us, Antonio, do you think that marriage uh, makes you live longer or can make you live shorter? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think this, Antonio? <laughs> yeah, the, the, uh, living with, with another person uh, sometimes uh, makes certain, uh, certain crises. And <laughs> handle with, with this, uh, I think uh, uh, it's short the, the life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. 
Um, so, so maybe um, from a married man's perspective, we hear from Antonio, right? <laughs> okay, very good, very good. So we'll go next to Christoph. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Great, nice to see you. And where are you from? Uh, I'm from France. Uh, yeah. Okay, very good. From France. What do you think about this topic? Does, does, does marriage make you live longer or shorter? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm not uh, yet married and uh, I think in my opinion there is no uh, relationship between uh, the, uh, the life and the, the marriage. I don't know mm -hmm. if there is uh, actually a relationship between all of them. Okay, yeah, so, so maybe there's no relationship. Um, Antonio, uh, there's a lot of noise coming from your microphone. So if you could just go ahead and mute your microphone and then you can unmute it um, whenever you want to speak, okay? Okay, yeah, very sorry, good. Um, sorry, sorry. I, I mute. No problem, no problem. Okay, thank you. Um, so Christoph, you think that maybe there isn't a relationship between um, being married and living longer or shorter? Yeah. Okay, very good, very good. So, um, of course, I'm just asking for your opinion. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, but we'll take a look at the article and see uh, what the article says. Okay, let's go next to Iman. Nice to see you. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. Thank you very much, Andre. Uh, uh, I'm Imad. I'm from Syria. Uh, right now, I'm living in Egypt. Uh, about marriage, I think uh, it will make our life shorter for sure, for sure because it's responsible responsibility. Uh, this will have uh, to make meaning for our lives. So it's it will compress our life and uh, will make will make it shorter, but will have meaning at, at the end. Okay, so you think that being married makes your life shorter. However, it also adds meaning to your life. Yeah. Okay, very good, very good. Um, nice opinion. Let's go next to Ermilo. Yeah, my name is Ermilo. I live, uh, and I live in Mexico. And my opinion about to be married, uh, what can I say? Uh, I was married, but uh, now I am separated. Uh, it, it didn't function. Mm -hmm. That's all. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I understand. And what do you think about um, the effect that marriage has on your lifespan? Do you think that it can make oh, you live well, longer or shorter? Uh, it affected now uh, in my life because now I have to uh, to make my uh, all, all my my foods and mm -hmm. um, uh, but I think it's too much better to be alone because nobody is uh, is bothering you. Nobody is uh, you can you can do anything you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is too much better to be alone. Okay, yeah. very good. So that's another opinion. Maybe you prefer to be a single, Emilio. Okay, very good, very good. We'll uh, go yeah. next to. I, we'll I, go I, next I, to I prefer to be a single. Okay, great. Uh, we'll go next to Mina. Mina, how are you? Hey, Ms. Audrey. <clears throat> I'm fine, thank you. Great, it's nice to see you again this hour. It's my pleasure. Okay, so tell us, um, Mina, where you're from and what you think about this topic. I'm from Egypt, and I think it depends on, the, on your circumstances. Maybe if you got married and you have like sex, it, it won't work. It, it depends on your financial circumstances as well. Mm hmm Okay. It depends, on, it depends on... Go ahead. Uh, it depends on the location and both uh, of, uh, you know, uh, husbands and wife personalities. Okay. There okay, so yeah. There so... factors. Mm hmm Yeah, that's a good point. So each marriage is very different. There are a lot of different factors that could play into yes. that. Okay, uh, great, great. Let's go next to Hikardo. Nice to see you again as well. Okay, Audrey, Ricardo, São Paulo, Brazil. Uh, I, I am married, uh, I am divorced, okay? I think nobody needs nobody to be happy. 
but uh, maybe you can find a people to a person to live with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. And what do you think um, the effects are on your lifespan? Do you think that it affects how long you live? I think so. I think yes. Okay, okay, very good. So um, let's go next to we have Homulo. Hi. Hi, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what your opinion is on this topic. I'm from Brazil and I think the marriage is an important thing and a little bit hard too because you need to understand what the, the other people will, will think about it and <laughs> I know what to say. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's very good, that's very good. And um, about the article topic, which is how marriage affects how long you live, what do you think, Mulo? Do you think that it extends your life or that it shortens your life? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, that's fine, that's fine. Maybe um, when we take a look at this article, um, you might get an idea. Okay? Okay. Okay, very good. And last but not least, we have Vivian. How are you? Hello, Audrey. Fine, thank you. It's I'm great from, to see you. I'm from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And about the topic, uh, I... I I have this uh, belief that what we want, I mean, like, what we want for our life, uh, you, you get it. What you think, you get it. So maybe if you are married to a person that you really want to stay together, so because of this, because you want to be alive, to be at that person's side, it makes you live longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so maybe depending on the relationship, it could help to extend your life because you really want to be with the person. Yes. Okay, very good, very mm -hmm. good. So I think, well, let me see, we have Eduardo, you've joined us, how are you? Yes, uh, hi Adrian, how are you? I'm fine. Great, nice to see you, where are you from? I'm from Lima, Peru. <coughs> Okay, perfect. And what do you think about uh, marriage? Do you think that it could extend your life or that it might shorten your life? Uh, it depends on the type of marriage because we know that some people are married but there there is no love. So if, if you are with that person, maybe you argue with this person too many, ta too many times and <clears throat> you are unhappy so when when these things happen uh, it could be that your life shortens mm -hmm. okay yeah good point so uh, again the idea that it depends on the marriage a lot of you had mentioned that that maybe it just depends on the marriage and I think that's an important point okay so I think we have introduced everybody I hope so we're going to go ahead and get started with the article. So just give me a moment and I will put it up on the screen. You can click my screen in the bottom, um, but I'll also give you a link in case you prefer to follow along with the link. Okay, so there's the link in the Verbling chat and I'll post it as well in the Google group chat if you want to access it there. So just let me know if you have any problems accessing the, um, the article. Otherwise, we will go ahead and get started. Um, this first one is a little bit long. Antonio, would you like to read it for us? Are you there, Antonio? You may need to unmute your microphone now. Yes, yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no okay. problem. Okay, let me... Uh, see the page. Okay. It's supposed to, to last through thickness and in health, but it turns out that it's a better idea to get married because you love someone, not because you think it's going to give you a healthy for the long haul. 
That's the message from a study published this month in the Journal of Health and Social Behavior, which contradicts um, previous research that uh, stole the health benefits of partnership. It turns it turns out uh, the marriage that marriage is all well and good until the person's health starts declining. Okay, very good, very good. Um, one Sorry. thing that I wanted to point out to you, Antonio, yeah. was um, the word. Let me find it. Published, published. Okay. Where? So Where? instead of adding an extra, it's about halfway down. It says the message from a study published. Can you see mm -hmm. it? Okay, so a okay. common mistake might be to add an extra syllable, for example, to pronounce it published, but yes. it should be altogether published instead of that. Okay? Published. Okay. Okay, perfect, perfect. That's the only vo um, pronunciation correction I had. So your pronunciation was very good. Um, before we talk about this section, are there any vocab questions or phrases that you didn't understand? Anybody in the class? Extolled. Okay, let's see. Let me find it. It says, which contradicts previous research that extolled the health benefits. So to extol is to praise something. So previous research had praised health benefits of partnership or marriage. Okay, and this new study that we're about to read about is contradicting that praise. Okay. And what does long haul mean? Yeah, it says it's going to keep you healthy for the long haul. It means for the long run or for a long time. Okay. Okay, very good. And Vivian, um, Mikhail posted a picture. I just wanted to <laughs> ask you a question. <laughs> yes, it's there. Oh, it's there. <laughs> have, have the teachers been asking you to show it to them? Actually, I was on Hina's class previously, and she said she saw it too. <laughs> I just wanted to see it. It's great. I love it. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. Um, Vivian has made a verbling notebook. It's wonderful. Um, but, uh, yeah, you had a question about long haul, and it just means for a long period of time. Were there any other questions? Extol. Okay, yeah, extolled means to praise something, to praise something. So it says um, the research extolled the health benefits of partnership. So the research that was done previously was praising those health benefits or saying that they were very important or very significant. Okay, okay. any other questions? So um, what it says here is that, as you can see, there was previous research done that showed that there were many health benefits to having a long-term partner or a um, spouse, a husband or a wife. So this new journal is maybe contradicting those um, researches or those studies done. Okay. And what does the last section say? It says, it turns out that marriage is all well and good until a person's health starts declining. What is it saying there? Uh, it means it's good. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Man. No, bro, go, you go. Okay. It's like when, let's say, the husband or one of the spouses get sick something or get uh, not in good uh, health condition, the other, uh, the partner will start to complain about the situation and the life uh, in his marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so that could be a reason why 
But exactly as you said, if, if one of the people in the relationship gets sick, um, according to this new study, it's actually worse for married couples. Okay? Um, very good. Any other questions about this section as a whole? Do you understand what this section as a whole is saying? Uh, it means that uh, magic is uh, not always good because uh, if, you, if you get sick, for example, or your wife, uh, then it's it's going to be very hard for your partner. Uh, if you if you are sick, for example, it will be very hard life, and you will have a hard time in dealing with the situation. And yeah, to make mm -hmm. his life shorter. Mhm. Mm yeah, yeah. So um, it says that marriage is good for your health and for your lifespan as long as one person is not sick and maybe if one person is sick in the relationship that could affect um, how helpful the marriage is for your life. Okay, um, very good, very good. So if there are no more questions we'll go to the next section and continue on learning what the author is talking about. So let's go next we have to... Here in Mexico we, we have here in Mexico a phrase that I will try to translate it into English. Uh, when poverty comes in by the door, love jumps out by the window. Okay, yeah, so, so we have when poverty... So, say the first part again, I forgot it. <laughs> okay, when poverty comes in by the door, Mm -hmm. Love jumps out by the window. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. When poverty comes in by the door, love jumps out the window. What do you think about that phrase? Do you think it's true, Emilio? Huh. Uh, ask me if it is true because uh, I think it was uh, uh, the, the main reason because I am separated of my wife because I lose my employee and after that I have to be separated from her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so it can definitely put a strain on relationships. So um, in the article it's talking more about health issues but other things can cause strains on a relationship like as you said poverty or difficult uh, economic times. Okay, uh, very good point, very good point. So let's continue with the article. Christoph, would you like to read the next section for us? Okay. While studies of married and single people show that healthy and married people are far clear, uh, I'm sorry, far likelier to die than healthy married people during the 20 year research period. The numbers equal out when both married and unmarried people report poor health. Marriage is more protective for healthy people, says lead author Is Zhang, an assistant professor of sociology at Ohio State University. Okay, very good, very good. Um, just wanted to point out a similar thing that I. I said to Antonio, so when you have an ED at the end here, it should be unmarried, unmarried. Unmarried. Okay? Okay, perfect. So you don't add an extra syllable there, it just goes on to the last syllable. So we have unmarried. Okay? Yeah. Very good. Um, are there any questions, um, either Christophe or the rest of the class? Any parts of this part of this paragraph that you did not understand? Likelier. Okay, it says healthy unmarried people are far likelier to die than healthy married people. Who can tell us what it means, uh, likelier? It's likely or. Mm hmm. It means more likely, more likely. More likely, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, any other words or phrases that you didn't understand in this section? Uh, can we say uh, the superlative likeliest? One more time, Ermilo. Yes, I see likelier is a comparative. Uh, so can we say the superlative likeliest? Yeah, you could say they are the likeliest uh, group of people. Mm -hmm. Okay, good question. Any other questions? Uh, is, it, is it a normal way to say? Sorry, sorry, sorry no. Uh, okay. Sorry, go ahead now. This time is yours. Okay, okay. Uh, Miss Audrey, uh, uh, does do he does he mean uh, by unmarried people single people or just unmarried? By unmarried, he means anybody who um, it could be somebody who's divorced or separated or widowed or single. Ah, okay, got it. Okay, um, Iman. Yeah, I, I, I ask, is it formal way to say are far likelier to die than healthy married? Is it? Uh, formal way to say like like her. Yeah. Is there a more formal way to say it? Yeah. Um, you can say likelier is fine. It's a formal, acceptable formally. Um, okay. You can say you can say more likely or likelier. Either one is acceptable. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions? So let's look at the first part. I want to understand very well this. Go ahead. Uh, the word unmarried. Unmarried is uh, for both uh, before to be married and after to to work or after the somebody was married and now it is separated is uh, is for both situations. Right, for both situations. Okay, so that's what it's referring to here in the article. Somebody who is either single and has never been married or somebody who was divorced, um, separated, or widowed. Okay? Um, yeah, so let's, let's discuss this a little bit. It says, studies of married and single people show that healthy unmarried people are far likelier to die than healthy married people. So these are just the studies that says that they are far likelier to die, not just a little bit, but much more likely to die than married people. What do you think about that? I think uh, living alone is is like a sick. It's like un it's an unhealthy issue. Uh, it's it's not acceptable for a long time because people who is, who are living alone. Uh, for a long time, they will suffer from problems with their psych problems, and may may also may uh, face some, let's say, uh, yeah, the, the health issues will healthcare will become uh, not that great because they are not satisfied with their life. The meaning of their life is not that uh, they what they uh, really want. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So that's one view. Um, anybody want to comment on what Imad said? Do you agree or disagree? I agree. Okay. You agree. So you think that it makes sense what this article is saying that married people are far likelier to um, live longer than unmarried people. Yeah, if both of them are healthy, maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Any other comments? What do you think? Uh, I think um, because the habit that uh, the married people um, uh, take um, care of the less uh, than the married people because you your wife or your your partner take care of you and you take care of her. Mm -hmm. um, and when you are single or unmarried, 
you go to party, you 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 eat fast food, you I don't know, perhaps the habits are more more uh, uh, near to to unhealthy life. Okay, yeah, good point, great point. So um, that could be mm -hmm. a, a factor. Uh, Vivian, do you want to add something? Yes, maybe we should add like uh, something more specific because they are talking about healthy marriage people and uh, healthy single people. And I think there should be some something about people who are who have a uh, health marriage because if you if you don't have a health marriage, if you don't get along with your partner, or if you married for a reason that you did not want. And it, it will make you feel bad. It will mm -hmm. make you have problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so that could be a, a good point. And this, this research doesn't, doesn't deal with the fact that maybe some marriages are healthier than others. So when it says uh, healthy people, it means physically healthy. Maybe they don't have a serious illness but it's not referring to um, how their relationship is and how healthy their relationship is. That, that okay. makes this, the research too wide to, to take some mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, what it means is that there can be so many different interpretations of the study. Um, you can look at the data, and the data is not an opinion. The data is true. However, there can be many different factors. Uh, that influence the data. Okay, uh, very good point. Any other comments before we continue? Well, I am, I am seeing that uh, uh, it doesn't matter uh, uh, what happened with the health of the people. Uh, the report says that it happened the same uh, with uh, both uh, married and unmarried people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, Maybe in the report, it, it doesn't have to do with um, how healthy the marriage is. They don't, um, they don't dis distinguish between the two. OK, anything else? Then let's go to the next section. Um, we're going to actually look at some of the numbers um, in this study. So. Who read it? Who read last? I can't remember. Was it Iman? No, I didn't read yet. Okay, go ahead, Iman. Would you like to read this section? Okay. In the study, researchers uh, uh, tracked uh, uh, 789,000 people who practiced in the National Health, in, uh, health Interview uh, survey from 1986 to 204, 2004. Participants were asked to rate their health from excellent to poor. Following up, that allowed uh, Zheng uh, Ding and Pat uh, Patricia Thomas, uh, a post uh, doctoral, post doctoral fellow at the University of Texas at Austin, Austin to determine mm -hmm. that uh, 24,100 Participants died between 1986 and 2006. Okay, very good, very good. Sorry, you had some tricky names in there, but you did very well. Yeah. <laughs> is okay. It zing, uh, the, the edge is silent, isn't it? I can't zing. tell you exactly. I, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> okay, but we can say zing. We can say zing. So. Yeah. Um, now we're getting into, as I said, the real numbers and the data. So before we've just been talking about the data, now we're looking at the numbers. So um, anybody have any questions before we talk about the numbers? Were there any words you didn't understand or phrases you didn't understand? Most doctoral. Okay, yeah, it says a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Texas. So a postdoctoral fellow is somebody who has already achieved their doctorate degree at a university. At a university. 
And do they and do they uh, award a certificate for the post uh, post doctorate uh, period, or is there any certificate, any name for this period? Yeah, so somebody who has their doctorate, you could also say it's a PhD, a PhD. I was also confused about uh, some expressions. Uh, they sometimes refer to the students in the university who uh, are in the final year, or let's say they have only one term or one year to finish the, the, the study as uh, undergraduate, undergraduate. Mm -hmm. and the people, yeah, but uh, in the, let's say if it's five years, for example, five years study term, the first year is freshman and the second year I can't remember, so I, it's kind of tricky for me, I'm not sure about it, can you please give sure. me the name of, yeah. yeah. Sure, so I'll talk a little bit about the um, universities, it's a little um, aside from the article, but it's important yeah. information. Um, so I will go ahead and answer that. So um, you have four, four uh, years that we have specific names for. So the first one, as you said, um, Iman, was a freshman. I'll type these in the chat. Um, the second one is sophomore. So if you're in your second year, you're a sophomore student. Your third year, you're called a junior and your fourth year you are a senior. If you have a five-year degree, there's really no specific common term used for the five-year, um, the fifth year, but you would also be called a senior. Can you say again, Vivian? Your microphone is a little um, tricky. I said they would be called old. <laughs> the fifth year? Yeah. Yeah, we don't have a specific term for it, so um, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe you could call them seniors as well. Okay, and um, as it has here, um, what you said, Imad, was undergraduate. Your undergraduate just refers to your first four or five years in college. So it's not only the year before you graduate, but it refers to your first uh, four or five years. Yeah, I understand. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah, yeah it's no much. problem. Uh, it was a good question. So a uh, postdoctoral, going back to the article, just means she has completed her doctorate degree. So she finished her undergraduate degree, uh, she got her master's degree, and then she finished her PhD. Okay. Any other questions? So what do you think about this study? The researchers tracked 700, or 789,000 people. That's quite a large group of people to track. What do you think? Um, how do you think that this uh, study reflects the truth about how marriage affects I your lifespan. I think in this case it's biased because they only selected, let's say, type of people who is, uh, let's say, uh, have education or have the will of, to be educated. They didn't mention the, the other side of the society where every people are, the people who are usual people who are not studying in the university or completing their study. Uh, so it's selective bias, I think. Okay, and I don't think that they specifically um, selected people who were doing their study, even though they had a university um, conducting the study. The numbers were taken from the National Health Interview Survey, which is something that um, is available to people of different classes. So it's not limited to the people who are in university or in the schools to uh, to go to these interviews, or is right? It it's general? it's not it's not only for university people. It's for okay. um, people all over the country. Okay. 
Okay. Um, very good. Very good. Any any other thoughts, Vivian? Well, they they needed too many people because there are a lot of types of marriage, so they went to the big biggest uh, amount of people they could because they could cover all the all the bases, all the types of marriage, all types of people. Right, exactly. Anytime you're conducting a study or doing research, it's always good to have a really large amount of people. Um, that way you can um, maybe think about all the other factors. Okay, very good. Any other comments? They also tracked them for quite a long time from 1986 to 2006. And it says that in that time, 24,100 of the participants had died. So they used those people as their data set. Okay, it's kind of sad when you think about it. 24,100 people died in those years. Um, but you know uh, they used it for the data. So let's see what let's see what came out of this. And we have Eduardo. Did you read already? No, I haven't read. Okay, could you read this one for us? Okay, when they reported excellent health and married people in the study were on average seventy-five percent more likely to have died than married people. More specifically, separated folks were 58% more likely to die during these studies. Divorced people were 62% more likely and widowed people were 93% more likely to kick the bucket compared to married people. Okay, very good, very good. So here we have the actual percentages of um, how these people compare as far as their lifespan. So any questions before we discuss? Yes, one question. Go ahead. Uh, it's the same to say more likely than to say likelier. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can see in the uh, previous paragraphs they had used the term likelier and now they're using more likely. They're both acceptable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Kick the bucket. Yeah, 93% more likely to kick the bucket. What does it mean to kick the bucket? To die. Exactly, to die. So <laughs> it's uh, maybe a lighter way of saying to die, to kick the bucket. That's a way. Is, is it okay? Yes, it's an idiom to kick the bucket. A lot of times people will make what's called a bucket list, which is something or all the things that they want to do before they die. Okay, so yeah, to oh. kick the bucket just means to die. Yes, I remember a movie called uh, The Bucket List mm -hmm. uh, between uh, two old men. Uh, they, they they knew themselves in the, in the hospital and they they made the, the bucket list for what they want to, to do before today. Exactly, exactly. They made a movie of it. So hopefully that can help you to remember uh, the bucket list or to kick the bucket. Okay, very good. So let's talk a little bit about these statistics. It says unmarried people were 75% more likely to have died than married people. Uh, that's quite a significant difference. What do you think? Is that surprising to you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, why do you think that it's so high? Why do you think it's so much higher for unmarried people to have died than married people? Because unmarried people uh, um, maybe should they take care of their health more than married people because they have more time to take care of themselves 
Oops. And instead of take care of the other partner and kids, etc. Okay. Um, well, the studies show that actually unmarried people were more likely to die. So um, I'm not sure if you were talking about maybe unmarried people having more time, but they were the ones who were much more likely to have died in that period of time. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's because um, yeah. they, they feel more free to put themselves into risky situations. It's because they, they don't have, they are not thinking about other people um, you worry or concern about them. Okay, yeah, maybe that could be it. Maybe they're going skydiving and, and crazy things like this. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, but um, in seriousness, that could be a very good point, that um, they're putting themselves in more risky situations. Any other ideas? What could contribute to this huge difference? It maybe contains a difference in thought or ideas because they didn't marry in the first place because they don't like don't like to to get the responsibility or because of their own psych bro problems or like that. So uh, they end up with a dead end. <laughs> that is not expectable. So it's not always marriage problem, maybe something that is caused them to die and not to marry at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great point because it's not necessarily um, because they're unmarried, but maybe some of the reasons that help them to be unmarried. Okay, what was your example, Ahmad? Uh, poverty, for example, not having uh, mm -hmm. yeah. suffering right. from something, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So there could be so many different factors like this. Okay, anybody else have some ideas what might have caused these high numbers, high percentages? Uh, maybe uh, in unmarried people are more likely to die because uh, they feel sad or maybe they have problems and they don't have someone to talk to and someone that can give him or her a piece of advice. So it could be possible that they can kill themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be. It could be that the suicide rates might be higher among unmarried people than married people. Okay, very good point. And look at these other numbers. Uh, they broke it down into more specific or smaller categories. So separated people were 58% more likely, uh, divorced people 62%, and widowed people 93%. Uh, what do you think about these, these smaller categories? Any ideas as to what could affect these? Maybe 93 if widowed. Because they, uh, they feel sorry or sad or grieve about uh, their partner death. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it could be that they're very sad about the death of their partner. Another thing for widowed people is that um, typically or um, on average, widowed people are older than um, maybe somebody who is just unmarried. Um, because maybe their partner has gotten older and that's why they passed away. So maybe that's why they're more likely, um, just because they're older. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it could yes. be different, different factors. Anybody else want to comment before we move? Okay, let's go to the next section then. And, and we have... Uh, Ermilo, could you read this? And I can hear some music, which uh, you have great music, that's fine, but uh, make sure yeah. to mute your, <laughs> make sure to mute your uh, uh, microphone if you're having music. Okay, okay? Uh, marriage then can be a boon for a health. 
it encourages people to maintain good health behaviors and have good social support and a sense of purpose in life, says Shen. But while marriage is good for health, its protective effect declines as people's health declines, says Shen. Okay. Married people, okay. Okay, that's good. Um, we'll stop there. Uh, so you had good pronunciation, Ermilo. Uh, no problems there. Any questions here? Uh, any question you say for me? For you or anybody else in the class? Are there any questions? No. Mary can be a. Uh, One more time, Mina. Protective effect. Okay, yeah, so it says the protective effect. It's referring to the protective effect of marriage or um, how marriage maybe protects your life, makes you live longer. So that effect of marriage having you or helping you to live longer declines as people's health declines. Okay, is that clear or is it still a little bit confusing? Can you give an example? Yeah, so um, I'm thinking of an example. But a protective effect is anything that um, protects you from, in this case, living shorter. So marriage is something that is protecting you in this uh, particular study from living shorter or from dying early. So the protective Sorry. effect of marriage is declining as people's health declines. As people's health decline, the um, positive effects of marriage are also declining. Okay. Oh, Lucky's yes. perfect. Say again, Vivian? <laughs> Nothing is perfect. <laughs> yes, that's true. Okay, um, very good. Any other questions? So it means that when people get sick, uh, get uh, Ill, illness, um, this uh, the marriage is is not good for for health. Right, exactly. So when people get an illness, the marriage is actually um, not, not good for your health. And why at the at the beginning says marriage then can be a boon, or we can say it can be a, a bless for a health. Right, a boon, something that is um, beneficial, like a blessing. So it says yeah, at, the, uh, at the front it's saying that marriage is usually positive for your health. However, when somebody gets sick in a marriage, then the positive or protective effects decline. Okay, so when you have two healthy people, um, marriage can be good for your health, but if somebody is sick, if one or both of you are sick, um, marriage may not be as good for your health. Uh, when one of the of the two people that make the marriage is uh, uh, with an illness, uh, it can carry to illness to the other person. It could be. That's not what it's referring to in this article, um, but it is possible. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit uh, confused. Uh, uh, the, the yeah, th of the, yeah, that's uh, okay. Maybe let's continue to the next one, and it might clarify what the author is trying to say. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, Mina, would you like to read the next section? Sure. Uh, unmarried who fear uh, to excellent, very good, good or poor health were 40% more likely to die than similar married people in their study. That breaks down to 39% greater 
a risk of dying for those who were separated. Thirty one higher risk for divorced people and we a higher risk of dying for widow people compared to those who were married. Okay, very good, very good. So now we're talking about just the people who reported fair health as opposed to excellent, very good, good or poor. So fair health is maybe not so good health um, but not poor health. So it says these unmarried people were 40% more likely to die than married people. Uh, that's quite a difference from the original number which was 75% more likely to die. So, um, so what it's saying is that when you have lower health that may um, decline how helpful marriage is to extend your life. Okay, is that a little bit more clear now, Ermilo? Uh, so this uh, this breaks down to a 39% greater risk of dying for those who were separated. So uh, I, I can say that I have a, a higher percentage of to to be alive. Okay. Yeah. So so if you're applying it to yourself, uh, then it says you you may have a greater risk. Um, however, I, I like to think that that's not true for you, Emilio. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to I want to live, <laughs> so I don't want to die. Yeah, so, and I think, Emilio, uh, since uh, you're, you say you're happy being single, I think it's good yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm living in single right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, very good. So, uh, as we see, um, both the previous paragraph and this one are talking about how maybe if you have declining health, um, the amount of help that marriage does is less. Okay, any comments? What do you think? Anybody have a comment about this? I think all of this is the You're having some problems with your microphone, Mina. Could you repeat? I think 40% is, you know, comparing, uh, comparing to, I mean, uh, 70, 75%. Okay, and what do you mean by that exactly? Uh, I mean, I mean, 70% is too much, you know, in this, mm -hmm. in the last paragraph. Mm -hmm. It's uh, annoying. <laughs> Yeah, so you think maybe it's more realistic to think something like 40%? Okay, yeah, so 75% does seem very, very high. Um, but uh, these are the numbers, and as we said, there, there are many different factors that could contribute to it. Uh, maybe some unintentional uh, or unintended factors that are making the numbers so high. Okay, yeah. we'll read we'll read one more section because we're running out of time and then we'll have some last comments. So um, we have, let me see. Pablo, are you there? Okay, maybe not. We'll go to Homulo. Would you like to read this last section for us? Okay. But <coughs> Sorry. What's going on? Dice love fade as health fades. That's hard to document from the studies and analysis, but part of the explanation may be more prosaic. Married people are not as quick to report a decline in health as unmarried people. So by the time a married person copes to having failing health, that person may already be in dire streets. Okay, very good, very good. I just want to point out this word, analyzed, analyzed. 
Okay, just for the pronunciation, but everything else was great. And let me just give a quick summary of this one because we are running low on time. Um, but we're talking about why, what the reason is, what the cause is for these changes. So um, maybe, as the author suggests, um, married people are not as quick to report their bad health. Maybe uh, single people are more quick to say that they're not feeling very well and married people aren't as quick to say that. So that could affect uh, the results. Okay, do you think that that's a valid uh, reason? Do you think that that might affect the results as well? It's more for sake, as you said, it's not real. Say again? Uh, he said uh, the 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 first in the first uh, line. He said maybe more for sake. And oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you asking what does it mean? No, I mean uh, this is how I can uh, this is how I can refer to this paragraph. Uh, it's not real. Okay. Um, why do you think that, Iman? Because people who are uh, married uh, could be the same people who divorced, divorced or uh, or separated after that. So, what should marriage make to people who uh, does it change your feeling in pain or your sensitivity to uh, health issues? No, I think it's nothing. Nothing. Marriage have nothing to do with with uh, how you feel if you are good or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, anybody else want to comment on that? Do you think that it, uh, do you agree with the mod or do you think that it does have something to do with that? Uh, we are affected by the surroundings, by the, the, the things that are um, happening around us. So, of course, if you're married or if you're not married, it, it will have something to do with, uh, it will affect you some at some point. Okay, yeah, so, so there are two sides. Maybe, maybe you can think that um, it doesn't have an effect on your livelihood and your health, um, and maybe you can think that it does and it will affect not only your emotional health, but your physical health. Okay, um, very good, very good. So it was interesting to hear all your opinions. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, but I'll take down the screen and you can, of course, continue to read the, the article if you have the link in the Verbling chat. But uh, wonderful to talk to you all. I hope yes, to see you in the future. Uh, do you have a question, Ermino? Yes, uh, what, what's, a, what's the meaning of cups? Cups in, cop? the, in the cups. Let me look at it. Uh, to cop is to admit in this case, to admit to something. Admit? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So it says, by the time a married person cops or admits to having failing health. Okay, thank you, because uh, I, I knew cops are uh, police, mm -hmm. so I, I, yeah. cannot, I cannot see how, how, how to understand this. Right, exactly. But in this case, it means to admit to something. Okay, a married person cops to having failing health. A married person admits to having failing health. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So again, wonderful to see you. I hope you all have a great night or a great day, depending on where you are, and to see you in the future. Okay, everyone, take care. Bye-bye. Okay.